also a hatchet. Uh, I'm I'm about to post the next SCP's picture, and it is the most terrifying thing you'll ever witness. Are you being sarcastic? No, it is extremely terrifying. It's just a fucking plate. Fuck you. Oh my god. <laughs> it's just a plate. Right. Sometimes I look in the mirror and I think, wow. Let's continue with the SCP. Wait, I also love Book from Smashers. Also, this SCP means that the Foundation is directly aiding and covering up Roman persecution. <laughs> Oh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh. Oh no. I mean, it's not the worst thing cuz if you remember, the foundation nearly wiped out all of Japan because pe people were using emojis. <laughs> yeah, it's not the like <sighs> as fucked as it is, this is its case where like okay. I can understand why this is being suppressed. Like, this yeah. is actually a very legitimate threat to literally everyone on Earth that isn't in a super isolated community. But, mm -hmm. yeesh. Them optics, man. I, I, I still love it how if you say uwu or owo and use emojis in the SCP universe, you, you will die. <laughs> the bride would have died like 20 times over. Yes. Oh god, Cirrus. Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> yeah. Oh no. All the all the VTubers. <laughs> Gura. Holo life. They're all gone. <laughs> what will we do oh, without the little shark girl? She would also die. Oh fuck. What would we do without the small mouse rage? I think you would also die too. Yeah, Bright, you're walking me. <laughs> well, so she would die, Bright would die. Pretty much everyone who's in, like, our server would die. Yeah. We're all dead, basically. So, point being, I because we don't like have a middle ground between XK and like like at the very edge of fucking XK. I'll just say continent. Yeah. Also, and also we can't add any more tears. Yeah. We'd have to get rid of a previous tier. Yeah. Also, um, this SCP's nickname is called D A R D Information Restrictions Apply. Okay. <laughs> okay, so this is a Keter, but it's been called something different. It's threat classification. Deviant 9. Spatial slash temporal. The fuck is Deviant 9? I don't know. I've never seen this before. It's this even like written from, differently. Is, is this like from someone's failed attempt at creating a secondary like danger level classification rather than just using Keter? Probably. However, it does have a high rating of 431. Mm. So, I... Yeah, for perspective, what was the rating of the really bad redacted one? 59. 59 of, like, 100%? Well, no, that's how many people like it. Oh, 50. Oh. Yeah. Is there, like, a dislike function? Yeah, there's a dislike function. I... I, I don't... You can't really see dislikes. Uh... So either people aren't seeing the redacted one. Or people hate the redacted one. 
Yeah, which it's this SCP is written way differently because instead of like description, containment procedures, and all that shit, it's operational parameter summary, additional information, supplementary information. Yeah, that's odd. Yeah, this is this is. I don't have to read everything because I feel like if I don't, well, we're gonna miss things. So yeah, this is just this... a confusing format. It's out of yeah. out of out of out of the norm. Yeah. Well, let's see if we like it. Also, this one is called SPC. Oh yeah, it is. It's called SPC seventeen sixty four. Wait a minute. <laughs> Is this just filled with typos at this point? Maybe. Wait, maybe it's some kind of mimetic agent to where they have to scramble it. Probably. We're about to find out. Alright. The object in question is a small metallic disc, approximately 10 centimeters in diameter and 1 millimeter in thickness. Analysis of the object structure indicates that it, it is constructed of 99% titanium with traces of platinum, iron, and cadmium. Never heard of that metal. Mm -hmm. Both sides have been polished to a high sheen, and the object possesses a 99% reflectance mm -hmm. rating. The object in question is to be maintained in a cryogenic suspension within a bath of liquid nitrogen. Should the temperature of an object exceed negative 200 degrees standard, uh, auditory and visual alarms will go off to warn all personnel in the area to retreat to a safe distance of no less than 200 standard units with unit uh, units until a specialized on-site response team can be assembled to restore a safe operating power parameters under no circumstances are untrained personnel to enter the operational area without permission of a second circle or higher authority further information of the nature of the object is restricted to any personnel who do not yes yet possess level 9 esoterica training due to due to information security concerns and is outside the boundaries of a general su supernatural phenomenon case file Additional information. The object in question appears to be, to be an artifact of the or organization calling itself the Special Containment Procedures Foundation. Wait a minute. <laughs> that That's SCP Foundation. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> this is getting fucky. Yeah, this is getting fucky. Wait a minute. Yeah, Bookworm Bookworm says it's alternate universes. Yeah, yeah, it's... this is a which would make sense because it's called a a deviant nine spatial slash temporal. Hmm, that makes sense. So is this an SCP file that just like got imported into the into our SCP? <laughs> yeah. Oh, let's see. Let's see. All right. The mission of this organization appears to be similar to that of the Deviance Artifacts Research Division of the of the United Unified Empire. Wait a minute. <laughs> you got an empire going on, huh? <laughs> yeah. We've been talking a lot about John Williams. Is there gonna be some Star Wars references in here somewhere? <laughs> We need to get a John Williams track over this one, too. Maybe. All right. One odd phenomenon associated with this object is that the text of the supernatural phenomenon case file associated with the object has altered itself into the form of a special containment procedure file using a different file format than that used by the DARD. The conclusion of the theoretics department is that a localized information anomaly has formed in relation to this object between two parallel membrane universes in a localized space time. In layperson's terms, information pertaining to this object appears to have been reversed between our universe and the alternate universe. Even more unusually, this information leakage appears to be limited to the 
supernatural phenomenon case file summary only, some supplementary reports and classified documents associated with the object in question appear unaffected. But any attempts to reformat or edit the case file back to a proper DRD format or revert, revert within days into the anomalous SCP format. For this reason, personnel are no longer to waste time and energy repairing an anomalous information discrepancy as the SCP case file includes an addendum explaining the nature of the format discrepancy and the reasons we, why said discrepancy cannot be repaired. The effects on normal operating procedures are deemed minimum at worst. Sublimatory information. The object's alternate case file itself has been has itself been classified as supernatural phenomenon class, classified deviant 10 also known as multi spatial temporal multiversal although abbreviated the format and terminology used provides some interesting insights into the nature of its alternate dimension particularly interesting to DARD researchers is the use of the term special containment procedures itself First of all, the phrase indicates that the primary mission of this alternate realities organization is the containment and safekeeping of supernatural phenomena, rather than research and, and exploitation of such. In addition, the use of the term spe special may indicate that supernatural phenomena are considered a rare event in, in this alternate universe, indicating the, an alternate resolution to the Teller-Einstein event. In addition, this the use of the term key, K T R. Oh, Keter. I get it. As an object's classification indicates that the alternate organization feels safe and using a Kabbalistic term of power in a poetic sense as an indication of the object's level of reality alteration, indicating that unified. Thaumatology is either an unknown phenomenon in the other world or that research into UT is not yet discovered, the Jericho information theory. Further evidence that the alternate universe has not yet discovered or formulated JIT can be found in a casual and cav cavalier way in which the alternate universe's case file refers to the object in question by its case file number, indicating that applied nomenclature is not yet well understood field of study in the alternate universe. It has, however, been theorized that at least some understanding of JIT does exist as the alternate case file contains significant amounts of censorship and redaction of information, indicating that at least some rudimentary understanding of information warfare may exist. On a more frightening note, the object's alternate case file concludes with speculation into the nature of our universe by the SCP universe's own mentalist equivalents. This in includes several alarmist speculations as to the nature of the DARD and the unified empire itself. It concludes with a dangerous militaristic conclusion that the object in question may represent the first breach between our two universes, which could possibly possibly progress with, from mere information leakage into energetic and physical intrusions. It is the conclusion of the DARD that esoteric warfare specialists prepare emergency response procedures in the case of possible escalation by the alternate universe into our own, including the authorized use of TH-M-L level esoterical a scorched earth policy, ensuring the mutual destruction of our two universes should the intrusion occur. Although the DARD remains loyal to its mission as set forth by the unifier, the chance that possibility of alteration esoterica could fall into the hands of such an alarmingly brutal society must not be a continence. This report, uh, this is the note they said earlier. This report, 
was approved and sealed by Senior Scribe Oliver on the 29th day of the 10th Lunarium and 1013th year of the Unified Empire. All pro praise be to the Unifier, and may his wrath strike down upon me and the fruit of my loins for 10,000 generations, if I should lay astray a single soul through lies of omission or fact. And that's it of the SCP. Okay. I I really like this. This is interesting. So first off, this is quite possibly one of the most inventive and interesting SCPs I've ever heard. Yeah. It's literally just a fucking plate that is in a separate universe and has RSCP stuff in it. And then speculation from the the group on the other side, as well as reacting to our dumb monkey brains instinct of wanting to immediately kill things. Yeah. They think we're the GOC. Oh god. So for for starters, honestly, this is so refreshing after all of those lazy ass redacted oh. ones earlier. Um though ultimately as uh as was uh, stated within that, it's pretty clear that whatever is causing this disruptance that's leaking information between these two realities. Mm -hmm. um, if we do at some point try to get over there, there's the chance of a scorched earth policy that will end both of our realities. Yeah. So, uh, this is one of our handfuls of ZK. Yeah. Also, I decided to see who the writer was. And it is the owner of the site as of now, Dr. Clef. Oh. Cool. Yeah, one of the OG writers of the site. Who wrote... Yeah. Wait. And hopefully one that we won't find out about some gross scandal at some point. Yeah. We don't need more OG writers turning out to be scumbags. Yeah. All right. Uh, so, at first, I thought it was going it, to, it wasn't going to match at all with the picture again. Like with the cow thing. Yeah. But no, it like it matched. Oh. Um, that was so refreshing. Yeah. I, I love mm. how our ZK class are just like the most weirdest yet most interesting SCPs. Yeah, we've got like a phrase that could end reality. We now have like a, a, a fucking leakage between our reality and another reality that's ready to destroy us both. And an entity that we have nothing to know we know about and has the ability to combine with O55 to restart the universe. Yeah. A, a restaurant. <laughs> yeah, a fucking restaurant. I forgot about the restaurant. What's the restaurant do? I forgot. I think like it does like Certain reality and but uh, altering things. Uh -huh. Oh yeah, and the light fixture like <laughs> if it doesn't get what it needs, it it'll literally obliterate all forms of matter around it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Wasn't there? Um. Uh, oh, one of my. Oh, I was thinking of one, but then I forgot about it. Immediately after I thought of it. Right. Things that can destroy reality. I know it was a more recent one. Nah, whatever. Right. It'll probably come to me in like 20 minutes. Yeah. This is going to be the last one of the night. 
This is actually a very mm -hmm. pop. What this actually has let a, a lower rating than the previous one, even though it's well known. Really? Yeah. I mean, the other one was really good. Yeah. Uh, at first, it didn't look like an SCP article. Then when, when you read it, it was like, oh. Uh... Yeah, it was so fucking confusing at first. Yeah, but once you read it, you're like, wow, this is really well written. Yeah. <laughs> God, I'm really frustrated about my lack of remembering that SCP. Yeah. Anyway, the, uh, the SCP we're about to know, uh, Hatchet, you might actually know who they are. The Sisters. The Sisters. I don't know if I know that one. You'll have to read it. Alright. SCP-1765 is the collective designation for a group of... Oh wait, I forgot to do something right now. I I'm an idiot. Hold on. I forgot to do a drawing of the sisters. I did not draw them. Well, yeah. Hey, this will jog my memory. Yeah, I don't know those. I, I don't know these anime-looking-ass ladies. Alright. Uh, Alright, let me reread re again. SCP-1765 yeah, is the collective designation for a group of three semi Corporeal entities typically manifesting as vaguely humanoid off white silhouettes, instances of white silhouettes. Instances of SCP 1765 display a capacity to willfully weaken the structure of reality in their immediate presence, allowing them a limited but potent control over temporal and physical distortions within a substantial range. Instances of SCP-1765 are capable of speech and seem to, p to possess individual and consistent personalities. SCP-1765 was first introduced to Area 37 following a successful raid by Foundation forces on a Serpent's Hand cell located in a nearby city of Redacted. Several suspected an anomalous artifacts were, as well as 15 captured Serpent's Hand's operatives, were retrieved and brought back to Area 37, an isolated facility specializing in initial, initial storage of such items. During a preliminary examination of three of the retrieved artifacts, a, uh, all three instances of SCP-1765 appeared and addressed the attendant personnel researcher redacted. This conversation was recorded by the testing chamber's monitoring system. SCP-7... I'm going to just say 1, 2, and 3. That way it's a lot easier than reading. Yeah. Yeah. 1. Greetings. Greetings. Esteemed members of the Foundation. We come to you with auspicious news. 2. I. You'll be right, right pleased, you will. 3. Hello. Researcher. I, I'm sorry. I find that really funny. Like the two say, like two of them go, "I have information for you, and you'll be happy to hear it." And the other one's just, "Hi." <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the slower. That's the slower sister. Yeah. They they have social anxiety. Give them a break. Give them a break, Nathaniel. Yeah. All right. Res researcher what the hell one pardon sir i will be with you in a moment sisters sisters i thought we have to agree to let me do the introductions you are embarrassing us two oh <laughs> whoops he he go on we'll be quiet three apologies one yes uh oh wait ahem yes as i was saying Greetings, we are pleased to finally be able to make your acquaintance. For we have observed your organization for quite some time. Indeed, we have observed a great many, and out of, out of them, all of you stood out like a shining beacon of progress in a dark sea. Well done. Two. Oh, we are so very proud. Three. Congratulations. 
Three is just not saying more than one word. <laughs> yeah, I think three just has severe social anxiety. <laughs> that's that's my head cannon. Uh, researcher, was someone? The three gets... is me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Researcher, was someone get security? Researcher grabs his tongue, which becomes visibly blackened and withered. The One. researcher grabs his tongue? What? Well, it says under his voice line, it says, Reacher grabs, uh, grasps his tongue, which becomes visibly blackened and withered. It says right um. under the voice thing, so. Oh, okay. Uh, One. I told you, sir, I will be with you in a moment. Where was I? Oh, right. All this cons consider, we have decided that you and no other are worried of receiving our assistance. It is an honor most rare, we assure you. Two. Like a bloody steak it is. That's how rare. Three. Uh, Tartarare. <laughs> what? It T-A-R... T-A-R-E. T-A-R. Tartar. Tartar, okay. Yeah. Alright. Res researcher attempts to speak again, then falls to the floor. His tongue crumbles to dust. He loses consciousness. One. Hmm. Why must people always be silly? We shall f have to fix that later. I keep losing my train of thought. It is most infuriating. Two, our help. The severity. Three, assistance. One, ah, thank you. Yes, our helps. Seeing how meticulously you keep to the scientific method, we venture that that we could be most used to you if we do the same ourselves. Our abilities in that field are substantial after all. Yes, to assist you, we will conduct several useful experiments on your behalf and deliver you the data. We believe this is the beginning of a wonderful partnership. Two, or I think he's out cold, love. Three, unwell. One, oh, never mind him. They record everything. That's why we chose them, isn't it? Two, I, that's so. Three, yes. One, so to those who are listening, we will begin our experiments immediately, since there is hardly a point in dilly-dallying. Now we realize that they might seem a bit harsh, but trust us, we know what is best for you. Two, sisters know best. Hehe. <laughs> Three, always. Three, the entire voice log refuses to say more than one word. Oh, I feel bad for them. Yeah, I'm telling you, she's just got really bad social anxiety. Oh. This is going to turn sinister, isn't it? Yeah. Well, actually, it's kind of already is sinister. A guy got his tongue dissolved. <laughs> yeah. All right. Following this conversation, all three instances of SCP-1765 began to move rapidly throughout Area 37. As SCP-1765 continues circling Area 37, several events were noticed which have been associated with reality-bending phenomena. SCP-1765... Eventually ceased this pattern, presumably because Area 37 had become unstable enough to suit the parameters of their planned experimentation. At the conclusion of this process, security footage revealed that Area 37 was divided into four distinct sections, and Area 37's personnel divided between them accordingly, according to SCP-1765's location at the time of the event, as detailed below. Section A smallest of the sections, Section A was the least changed by SCP-1765. Notable additions are two large brass vats located at the east corner of the mess hall, a monitoring station connected to other sections of Area 37, replacing st storekeeping and a large wall of sign above the entrance to the dormitories reading Control Group. Personnel belonging to the Control Group are not subjected to the experimentation taking place and other sections of Area 37. Once every five to seven hours, the control room, uh, control group is visited by one 
instance of SV-1765, during said visitation, food and water are dispersed from the brass fence, and the visiting instances, instance typically addresses the control group, often encouraging them to use monitoring station to observe any ongoing experiments. Section B. Section B is the palcrum of a localized spatial temporal not abnormality. Because of this, its size, climate, atmospheric com composition, and pressure and temporal flow are all, all variable and se seemingly controlled by the wealth SCB-1765-1. The entity typically overseeing experimentation in Section B, according, according to SCB-1765-1, experimentation in Section B is meant to dwell into the effects of repetitive action performed under unusual conditions on the human psyche. Oh. That doesn't sound yeah. fun. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say this is they're 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 using all of these researchers as a as te as lab rats. Well, except for once in the control group. Well, yeah, they're lucky well, ones. Th well, no, they they are also lab rats because they're in the control group. They're a part of the experiment. Oh uh, yeah. They just aren't subjected to the same shit as the other people because they're the control group. Yeah. Section C. Section C exhibits a similar anomalous properties to Section B, though it is associated with SCP-1765-2 rather than SCP-1765-1. Observation indicates that experiments taking place in Section C tend to focus on group dynamics and interpersonal relations during extreme conditions. On average, the physical alterations to Section C during experimentation are more radical than those observed in Section B, while temporal alterations are significantly less so. Section D uh, Section D is currently the least understood segment of the altered Area 37 complex. Physically, it remains virtually unchanged from the state prior to its initial infestation by SCP-1765. Temporally, however, it appears to be entirely disconnected from the baseline stream of events existing as an isolated bubble from events occurring outside of it. The temporal reality of Section D, as well as any experimentation taking place within it, are associated with SCP-1765-3. Due to SCP-1765-3's terse speech patterns in the general obscurity of the experiments it conducts little is currently understood what the nature of, of experimentation taking place within section d regardless of the section and experimentation the experiment takes place in sp1765 will seek to provide the foundation with high quality video and audio feeds documenting it this data is transferred to the nearest compatible foundation server through currently unknown means, footage will also often contain recorded notes by the supervising instance of SCP-1765. So yeah, uh, that's it. Okay. Well, for, we know what goes on in C and B. I wonder if there's like a test report that goes on what goes on in D. Oh, there is. Did they did they mention what happens in C and B? Well, B is is human psyche, like it messes with the human psyche. And section C is like it like focus on group dynamics and interpersonal relationships during extreme conditions. Oh yeah, but that doesn't exactly tell us what the experiments are. All right. That just tells us what they're testing. All right. So I'll read the experiments for each section. That way we know what's going on. Right. Okay. Section B experiment. Test subjects are brought to an Area 37 support center from an unknown location and are given a wrench, a ruler, a brown paper pad, and a ballpoint pen. Subjects are then instructed by SCP-1765-1 to closely examine the sports center's plumbing system and to measure the exact length 
of each pipe and the angle in which it's, it is connected to other pipes. This process takes between 10 and 12 hours due to the size of the sports center before it can be completed. However, Section B continues to begins a reconstruction event, causing the plumbing system to be completely rearranged and rendering all work previously done moot. Test subjects are then instructed to begin again. The process be repeats itself 459 times before the experiment concludes. Bruh. That's fucked. Bruh. Now you can see why it, yeah. it can mess with the human psyche, because I would be going mad. Are there results from the experiment? I mean, there's... Listed? There, there are her notes. Yeah. Uh, following yesterday's somewhat disappointing expedition to... Oh, wait. Yeah. Uh, Olympus Moon... Olympus Mons, I have decided to attempt something less taxing on my test subjects, which are thus far proving to be both physically unimpressive and morally lacking. This simple exp examination of repeating sensory input in a manner in which it can be connected to other primal re reactions to the point of overload should prove both useful to you and within my test subject's rather limited capability. Finally, a, a proof that even if we try to learn from experience that attempt is ultimately pointless, since once life passes you by, you'll just have to learn everything all over again. That's useful knowledge, children. I do hope you're you are paying attention. All right, so let's happen in section C. The experiment. The experiment took place in two phases. On the first phase, set subjects were divided into two teams, both consisting consisting of of a mix of both MTF personnel and Serpent's Hand operators. Both groups were then instructed by SCP-1765-2 to head to the bunkers located at the ends of the field. While running in these to these positions, several hooded figures appeared on the stadium's bleachers and began bombarding the test subjects with fast-moving, fiery projectiles. Additionally, three meters tall curved platforms began rising from the ground, requiring Test subjects to exercise teamwork in order to bypass them. Due to the mixed composition of the team's test subjects were unable to overcome the platforms in time, and both teams were incinerated by the projectiles before reaching the bunkers. 30 seconds following this, the second phase of the experiment began, and the same group of test subjects again appearing near the 50-yard line unharmed. Subjects were again divided into two groups, one consisting only of MTF personnel and the other of Serpent's Hand operatives. Test subjects were again instructed to reach the bunkers. Tests proceeded as previously recorded, with both teams now able to surpass the raised platforms and reach the bunkers. At this point, however, the doors to the bunkers closed shut, and the two previously unseen pairs of sizable metal hammers descended from the unknown origin spot, crushing both teams to death. The notes. I saw the kitties were having a bad time with that double date thing we did, so I thought to myself, smile kitties today, don't go for romance no more. It's too slow for them. They want excitement and sweat and explosions and sports. So I called a few old friends of mine and they were happy to help. Weren't they just... What was the name of the tall one with the robes? Madam? Mavine? Or, or was it John? Bah. Can't remember. But I know he just loves football. He he. <laughs> we sure had a grand old time, even with the burning and the crushing and all. Oh, I think I'm forgetting something. Oh, the test. This was... This was a test, yeah. Um, see, it goes to show you that no matter who you're with, you'll eventually get crushed by huge metal hammers, hammers smashing down from the sky. Hmm? No, that can't be right. Ah, I got it. Doesn't matter how much you prepare, it's prepare and who's with you. Sooner or later, fate's gonna catch up with you. Hee <laughs> hee. Yes. This is, I like... This sounds just peachy. A lesson to be learned, my lads. A lesson to be learned. I felt like I've read a, te a, a female teenager's text. Yeah, that's, that, this, that, this sounds like early Tumblr shit. <laughs> like... 
like a whole shit ton of like teenage jargon. All right. Now we get to find out what goes on in section D. I'm kind of terrified. So I wonder if this is worse. Section D's nuts. Oh my gosh. I, just... I hate myself. All right. Experiment. Site director redacted enters areas 37's main containment vault. At the center of the vault, a table is placed. On the, on the table are two liter vats of redacted brand ice cream. One pistachio flavored and the other passion fruit flavor. Site director redacted is instructed by SCP-1765-3 to choose. Site director redacted then chooses pistachio flavored ice cream and leaves the room. At this point, footage momentarily blurs and site director redacted returns to the room in which the unchosen vat of ice cream was replaced by a different one. This one chocolate flavored. He is again instructed to choose, this time picking the chocolate flavored ice cream. The process repeats itself with each unpicked vat replaced by one of the of a different flavor. At the time of the writing of this document, the Foundation has received over 10,000 hours of footage from this experiment with analysis and identifying over 200,000 different flavors of ice cream, including Meerkat Marshmallow Madness, Tranquility, That Shoe You Always Liked, God's Wrath, and Redacted. All evidence suggests that this experiment is still ongoing. Notes. Delicious. <laughs> so, is what? Like, section D, like, not bad at all? You're just choosing um, ice cream. <laughs> oh, yeah, but there's no indication that they get the ice cream. They're just constantly choosing different weird flavors of ice cream over and over again <laughs> hey at least they're not dying yeah yeah at least they're not dying and being revived or having to fucking measure the length of pipes for 12 hours just to have the pipes change yeah this is this is odd i feel like this is like you would be going to hell if you go in section b or c yeah <laughs> Like, I mean, Section D, you, it, I guess it could be psychological torture, but it's not as bad as the other two. Yeah, like, let's see, C is the one that uh, had the people dying. Yeah. Um. <sighs> so, my first thought is that this is like, the Dead Man Wonderland version of Valhalla. Yeah. You you know, you, you go there, you, you, you have a big feast, and in the morning, you go out and kill everyone. You kill all the people from, from, from the place. But then, when it's feast time again, they're all revived, and they go feast and make merry, and then they go kill each other again forever. I honestly don't understand why anyone wants to go to Valhalla. Uh, like, uh, to, to each their own on terms of where they'd prefer to go for an afterlife, speculating. But that just sounds like hell. Not the good hell, the bad hell. Yeah. But, yeah. This is, this is like a to... terrifying SCP. I mean, yeah, it's like really scary on the surface of it, like what's happening to these researchers, but also what's it going... Like, I don't think that this is much of a threat to those outside of that containment facility. So yeah, a certain group. Yeah, a certain group makes the most sense here. Like, granted, the these... these uh, these girls, if they wanted to, they could fuck up humanity, but they seem to just want to keep doing their nonsensical experiments while framing them as if they're actually scientific. What I'm thinking I'm going to do for the next tier list is only put 30 at a time. That way it's not so pushed out that you can't read the sides. Yeah. 
Yeah. This is getting excessive. Yeah.